Hi there, Coach Sage Candy of VO2 Max Productions here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about half marathon pace strategy. And I just did a talk on marathon pacing, uh, which I'll link to there. Also link to uh, my half marathon training tips, uh, key workouts for a half marathon um, that you need to really run to your potential. And I'll link to these videos also at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. Uh, also follow me on social media in the description, uh, Facebook fan page, at Sage Canada on Twitter and Instagram. Um, if you want to follow along there, be sure to subscribe for more training talks. But let's jump right into the training talk for half marathon pacing right now. And, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter if you're an advanced runner, maybe you're moving down from a marathon or ultra marathon, or you've done a lot of half marathons, uh, or you're a beginner and half marathon is going to be the longest distance you've ever run. I remember when I started half marathoning uh, in high school, I was running about 30 or 40 miles a week. I was training for a 3K on the track and I'd never run more than 10 miles in any given training run. Jumped into a half marathon race in the winter um, to get ready for track season. It was a lot of fun. But uh, you know, if you're a beginner, a lot of times maybe you haven't run a long run more than 10 miles or 12 miles. You haven't gone the distance, but be confident that you can go the distance. And obviously with your mileage, uh, it doesn't affect pace strategy as much as it does as it would if, if you were doing a full marathon. And so when we look at pacing and we talk about uh, you know differences in pacing, it's a lot more like a, a 10K, how you pace a 10K or 5K. And generally with those types of races, um, the, an even consistent mile splits or kilometer splits are going to be the way to go. So even pacing, most efficient race, this is given, uh, you know, if there's decent weather conditions and you're running a relatively flat course. Um, what you don't have to consider as you do in longer races, like the marathon is an epic, epic bonk from running out of carbs, because uh, 13.1 miles, you really should be able to go the distance um, without having to take in uh, more than one gel or zero gels, um, maybe just a little couple sips of sports drink and water. If it's really hot, you're going to have to take in a lot more calories uh, or electrolytes, sorry, through maybe some sports drinks and, and hydrating through water. But if it's not super hot, uh, the body could run mainly on its fat stores and stored glycogen in your leg muscles uh, and from what you eat for breakfast. Uh, you could go 13.1 miles, regardless if it takes you an hour and a half or three hours. Uh, if it takes you on the longer end of the spectrum, you're going to be out there longer though. You might have to hydrate a bit more and taking uh, one gel pack uh, probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, a lot of people sometimes will take a little bit more. You really don't need it like you do in a marathon. So now that we got that out of the way, uh, you don't have to worry about epic, really epic slowdowns unless unless you develop too much lactic acid uh, too much lactate it's not um that's the limiting factor really that and and muscle fatigue uh, so if you're on the lower mileage beginner end of the spectrum maybe you run 10 miles a week 15 miles a week it's your first half marathon you're probably going to have to prepare yourself for some muscle fatigue sheer muscle fatigue and and leg pain uh because of the distance on pavement it's a lot of pounding that could slow you down. Whereas if, if you're a more advanced runner, uh, you're really pushing the limits with your lactate threshold, so to speak, uh, how you build up lactic, or diffuse lactate basically, so you don't build up too much lactic acid, uh, and that's gonna be a limiting factor. You could get a lot more out of your aerobic system. So even pacing, and you know, if we look at one of my favorite books, Jack Daniels' Distance Running Formula, uh, this is the first edition, it's really old, but uh, he explains 5k to 15k racing. Uh, he always says the quote, the biggest mistake you could make is in the first minute of the race. Now with half marathon, I'd extend it to the first mile. So if you go out and you sprint out the first mile way, way ahead of pace, maybe you're, you know, 20, 30, even I've seen 40 seconds ahead of your, your goal race pace. Uh, that's really a bad idea. You're going to start developing, uh, Lactic acid, probably you're probably going to be breathing really hard. You definitely do not want to be breathing really hard the first couple miles of a half marathon. Uh, it needs to start out a lot more relaxed. You could even start out a little slower than your goal pace and try to warm up into it. If you haven't done an extensive warm up or you've just been standing around on the starting line uh, just to get going or weaving through traffic. So first mile, first couple miles could be a little slow. You're warming up, getting into a groove. Um, I remember when I ran my PR uh, in 2000. 
11, we were going for an Olympic trials qualifier and we had to run basically 455 mile pace. Uh, but we were out a little slow. We were out in about 459, five flat. And then after three or four miles, started feeling a groove, started getting into it and really throwing down uh, and was able to speed up a negative split from there. But you look at your race, if you want to break it down, I think mentally it's the easiest to break it down into the first half, about the first six and a half miles, and then uh, miles six and a half to 10, and then the last 5K. So you look at the first half, the first half of the race, first six and a half miles about. Uh, it's about finding that groove and getting into a steady, uh, consistent pace, warming up and starting to hit your goal pace. Now, determining goal pace might be a little tricky. It's gonna depend on experience. If you have this book or some marathon or half marathon pace charts, uh, you could kind of figure out from your workouts what kind of pace might be sustainable. So if you've done any workouts like a 20 minute tempo run, uh, so to speak, uh, you might have a pretty good idea that, you know, maybe you can't quite hold that really high end tempo run lactate threshold pace that you hold in workouts for 20 minutes, but maybe you could hold close to that. Uh, maybe, you know, the half marathon is going to take you a lot longer than 20 minutes, but in a race type situation, when you're well rested and you've got energy, maybe you could go within 10 or 15 seconds per mile, uh, close to that lactate threshold type of pace. That's very realistic. Or if you've done uh, a 10K race, maybe you could, you know, take your 10K time and say, well, now I have to go a little over twice the distance. Uh, how much am I going to slow down per mile? Uh, it's a real good indicator. And it's going to vary depending on your experience level and time goals. Uh, but generally, it's going to be a pace that's a little bit slower than what your true lactate threshold pace. And if you run with heart rate monitors, not always real accurate. Um, you could say maybe it's going to be about 80% of your maximum heart rate, uh, but you want to start maybe a little slower and then work up. Um, obviously at the end you'd be hitting 90 to 95 or even 100% of your maximum heart rate. Uh, most people don't know what their true maximum is though. So breaking in the pace strategy, first six and a half miles, get out comfortable, get into that groove, don't go way ahead of pace because uh, you'll pay for it later. Um, and get feeling strong. Maybe you're, you're able to talk a little bit, but as you get halfway into the race, you're starting to feel some fatigue. You're breathing maybe, you know, a breath in, or you're taking two steps for every breath in and every breath out, uh, or exhale. Um, a 2-2 two -two breathing pattern is what we'd say. So starting to only be able to speak a couple words at a time comfortably, not carrying on full conversation. Uh, if you're doing that, you're probably going too easy. Uh, and then from six, six and a half miles to 10 miles is a real critical point in the race. You're just over halfway. It's when you're starting to hurt. Uh, I know I always am. And you're starting to really have to concentrate to hold on to goal pace maybe. Um, but you know, focus on just getting to that 10 mile mark. Check your 10 mile split. Maybe you've written splits on your arms so you know what accumulative time is there. You know what kind of pace per mile or per kilometer you've had to average to get to that point. And then the last 5K, you just lay it all out there. Uh, basically, the last 5K is real critical because it can make or break your race, but you have to know that you have to go hard in that last 5K if you want to run well. And uh, I wouldn't bank on being able to accelerate too much in the last 5K, but if you're able to just hold pace, uh, that's, that's a successful half marathon uh, in my book. In the bad ma half marathons that I've run, it's usually I got to 10 miles and then I tanked in the last 5K. So you don't want to rig up in the last 5K. Uh, it definitely is a big challenge. If you went out too fast in the first three miles, sometimes you'll be paying the price around 10 miles and that last 5K will be slow. Uh, likewise, if it's really hot out and you've, you've succumbed to dehydration or uh, really bad uh, muscle fatigue, um, that last 5k could be tough, but that's when you really have to persevere and throw down and start a long gradual acceleration to the finish line uh, from 10 miles out if you can. Um, but that's basically my tips uh, for half marathon pacing. Again, a lot of the, the pace that you could sustain for a half marathon is going to depend on what your training has been going into the half marathon. And hopefully if you've been doing some quality workouts, I'll link to my half marathon training tips uh, up here so you know what kind of quality workouts I'm talking about uh, not just easy paced running but actual things like two mile repeats uh, a long run um, even in you know interval training vo2 max type of workouts uh, you could base 
your race performances as well at maybe a shorter distance, 5K and 10K, and kind of extrapolate upwards. Um, but that's taking into account if you have a lot of endurance or you're naturally a better half marathon runner than you are a 5K runner. Um, so that's kind of general pace guidelines. Again, even pace is always going to be uh, most efficient. Uh, you definitely don't want to slow down too much in that last second half of the race. So uh, yeah, I'll link to the video on uh, marathon training there or marathon pacing there and uh, link to the video on half marathon training and types of workouts that I think you should do uh, to run to your potential in the half marathon. Uh, thanks for watching guys, thanks for subscribing to this channel and stay tuned for more Via2Max Productions.